With new knowledge sourced from ancient Egypt and other keys, such as the tarot, sacred geometry, the Fibonacci sequence, alchemy, hermetics, mythology and biblical scripture, we can now begin to put these fragments of knowledge and symbolism together and finally have an understanding of what has been hidden from us. With this understanding, we can unlock what was left to us by our very knowledgeable and wise forefathers. Unfortunately, this truth of our divinity was taken from us with violence and torture and hoarded in the strongholds of the Antichrist establishment, otherwise known as the Vatican. But don't be naive in thinking this information would also not be known by the Freemasons and the elite families and royalty. They took this knowledge for themselves and sold us a lie of death and hell. The Crusades were nothing more than an excuse to pillage and plunder all civilizations of this knowledge so it could be kept for themselves at the expense of the masses who they enslaved into bondage to serve only them. They murdered almost a million Cathars and stole all their scriptures and most sacred holy texts. They called them heretics and sentenced them to the most painful deaths. Now all we have left are remnants of these ancient texts that survived destruction. The rest was stolen by the Antichrist Catholics to be put together in a twisted version of scripture which they then used to lull the herd into a false belief of themselves and the reality in which they exist. Their agenda is to keep us in bondage to the physical plane so we cannot move into our ethereal body and they do this by giving us a perception of limit and lack about ourselves. We are told that we are beings that are finite and that we will die and we either go to heaven if we are on our knees to them or we go to hell to burn in eternity. However, worse still, some have now gone down the even more foolish path of thinking there is no higher God consciousness and they are not accountable for anything they do. The truth is we are all immortal, but as with everything, it comes at a price. We must be worthy of that immortality and we have accountability for our gift of life as that is how the universe sees our expression of soul. The truth is we really do need to be a good soul and have lived an honest life with good intent towards all fellow man and creatures. Then your immortality will be assured. For those that view this as acts of a vengeful God do not understand the laws of nature because for nature to continue to expand and thrive in perfection, only the best will ever remain in existence. It is just the law of the universe and nothing personal, and we see it play out around us in the physical environment every day in nature. This is also the same for souls and our consciousness. We have to understand that everything always plays out on multiple levels, and our souls are subject to the same laws as all existence. In Hermetics, these different levels are described as the three great planes. They are the physical, the mental and the spiritual. They are not so much even to be seen as distinctly separate either. They more or less merge into each other, but it is basically helpful to view reality as being layered and always playing out on these different levels in the macrocosm and in the microcosm. But this understanding of accountability is nothing new. For we see this also in the ancient Egyptian weighing of the heart ceremony, where the heart is weighed against the feather of truth. The feather actually represents Orion and the God light that illuminates the hearts of men. It is no coincidence that we hear this judgment theme repeated across culture. This is because indeed we experience a cosmic event in which our reality is shifted and we are judged. Once a soul is judged worthy of being bestowed with highest consciousness, they are rewarded with immortality on a newly rebirthed earth at the height of consciousness to complete this infinite cycle of the soul once again. This is why all these great civilizations, such as ancient Egypt, Samaria, Angkor Wat, ancient Greece, the Aztecs and Mayans, all sprung up from nowhere. And for those that think such a shift in reality would not be possible, even your own scientists, have discovered this truth in quantum physics, though hermetics knew of this law 
thousands of years ago and it is called the law of vibration and is one of the seven hermetic principles of the universe but we will talk more about this later. Charles Darwin's theory of evolution is incorrect. We live in cycles within cycles and all exist in rhythms of higher and lower, in and out, just like the tide. So we can understand this also happens within the consciousness of the collective souls. We can also see this explained in the hermetic principle of rhythm. This cycle happens infinitely. There is no starting point that we expand only forward from, as in Darwin's theory. Each and every soul exists at zero point, with the universe extending out from them in both the macrocosm and the microcosm. What Darwin's theory actually did was keep us bound to the physical plane once again. And once again, this is due to an agenda they have to keep us seeing reality in a certain perspective. However, this is part of a cycle we go through in our descent of consciousness. We begin the cycle in Zep Tepi, as the ancient Egyptians called it, which translates to first time, at the height of consciousness, as all the great civilizations around our planet did, only to descend once again into a time when humanity forgets its divinity and becomes broken and corrupt, full of empty souls who have forgotten who they are. This is the time we now live in, but soon we are about to begin that new cycle once again. The mayor actually were right, but just got the timing a bit off. But that is to be expected when you are orally handing down information over thousands and thousands of years. But the mayor knew it was about the sun changing, and the Hopi mythology also says this. And we must also remember when we are so focused on times and dates that the mayor and scripture say the exact time will not be known. Even so, the new energies are streaming in and all but the unconscious can feel them. And no, they are intensifying. Mother Earth is also reacting to this new energy. Her grids are firing up again as she adjusts and readies herself. She is also giving us clear messages to pay attention to our surroundings and our environment. We can only trust our instincts in these times. This new cycle began last year on the transit of Venus. We even saw the Queen take full advantage of this new energy, holding her 60th Jubilee right on the beginning of the transit. During that transit, Venus gave birth to a new cycle on the Sun. And it is important to note that Venus is also the timekeeper for the Mayor, and they watch the movement of Venus intently. So this last transit of a 26,000 year processional cycle is very important. If we look to mythology, we can equate this event to Isis giving birth to Horus or the Virgin Mary giving birth to Jesus. The new son Horus was birthed on the Venus transit last year and so began a battle between Horus, the new cycle on the sun, and the old and corrupted son Seth that oversaw a corrupted and broken civilization as told in the ancient Egyptian mythology. And the ancient Egyptian mythology tells of the battle ending with Osiris rewarding Horus as the victor. This is symbolic of the new light of Orion being transmuted through the new young son Horus, also symbolic of baby Jesus. However, we have to understand that Jesus and Christ have multiple layers symbolically and it is the Christ light that returns to the divine male twin soul that gives the name Jesus and Christ a connection with the son. This is why we see such reverence for the Son of God, because it is the Christ light that illuminates within the divine male, who is the Ark of the Covenant. The Lamb of God is God returning a part of himself to the divine male soul. The divine female twin soul is the embodiment of the moon, and she is more connected to the ethereal. She is represented by Isis, but Isis also has aspects of Venus, especially when Horus is connected with her. The divine female soul is the Holy Grail, and she receives her knowledge directly from God. The scriptures and mythology are all telling the same story, and that is that it is both the divine male and female twin souls that must bring forth divine knowledge together. This is because this knowledge originates in the ethereal realm of the divine, and as such, males and females are equal in both skills and intellect. So it is clear now why we are seeing biblical events unfolding around the planet 
and intense cosmic and celestial changes upon us. That light from Orion is returning to illuminate us once again, so we can once again access divine knowledge in a time of higher consciousness. We see this returning consciousness also present in the awakening we are experiencing as a collective. Even though the numbers are not large, there is a definite expansion happening nevertheless. Each soul is remembering their divinity by order of their birthing onto the physical plane. This, as with everything in the universe, is done following the Fibonacci sequence. The first souls that are birthed through are called divine as they hold the strongest memory of their divinity and the divine knowledge within them. But with each subsequent soul that births through, this memory is diluted to finally, when we have an imbalance of souls populating this planet, we get the majority with very little memory of who they really are. With this expansion of consciousness returning, what we are seeing in fact is us remembering the truth of our divinity that was once lost to us. We are beginning to remember who we are and the truth of our existence. In the following videos, we will use this uncovered knowledge and the other keys available to us, as well as numerology and symbols, to reveal what has been hidden about our true divinity and what information can be revealed amongst all the symbolism in religious art, alchemical and hermetic drawings, and even authentic crop circles. What they are hiding from us is that we are birthed as souls that split into male and female upon manifestation from God's consciousness onto the material realm. We are all immortal twin souls that were birthed onto this physical realm from the consciousness of our God located in the Orion Nebula. Our God consciousness is known by many names, Osiris, Odin, Vishnu, God and more. But every ancient civilization around the world knew the importance of the Orion Nebula and our God, for he shapes our reality. This is where a solid understanding of hermetics is required if you are to fully fathom this information. If we go back to where I mentioned reality shifting and quantum physics, confirming this could indeed be a possibility as we are all just particles created from waveforms. This is where we need to have an understanding for the law of the mental universe, for it is then we understand that reality is made up of particles all held together in waveforms due to the thought projection of the mental universe. The best way to visualize this is how we see sand particles move into different geometric shapes on a board depending on what resonance is used as in cymatics. When this understanding is applied to the hermetic law of the mental universe, we understand that the mental projection is resonance and light projected in waveform from the galactic core through the mind's eye of Orion and finally brings us into existence on the material realm through the transmutation of energy of the sun and the moon. The sun is the projection of God consciousness and the moon is the birther of souls and the souls are birthed through the navel energy center. Edgar Cayce also confirms this and calls this energy center the Leiden. But it is not only the Orion Nebula that is a consciousness in our galaxy. Each of the other nebula are also a consciousness and each manifesting a reality and souls onto a realm otherwise known as a planet. In our mental universe, Using the energies of the sun and the moon, as well as the influences of the other planets, we are manifested onto the physical plane. But due to the earth always being in shadow half the time, there is another plane that exists on this realm, and that is the ethereal plane. Throughout this cycle as souls, we move between both planes, manifest in the physical form, and when we die a physical death, our soul moves into the ethereal plane to be rebirthed once again in the physical. However, in our truest form, we are ethereal, and we manifest into different containers, so to speak. This cycle of reincarnation happens over a 26,000-year cycle. Until we are at the end of the cycle and the galactic core Atum once again gives us a pulse of illumination. Atum is infinite God energy with no consciousness. This is what all the nebula within the galaxy access to create souls and our reality. And this is where souls are returned if they do not pass judgment. 
Now that we understand the correct meanings of the numbers and symbolism, we see that the truth that has been once hidden from us can now be revealed.